She's got the regal wave going. It's hard for me to imagine that we can look at nature without thinking of God. I think right through my life I've been fascinated by growing things, whether it's a plant or an animal. Trees are certainly important because of the shelter they give to crops. I think we're still learning about the relationship with many forms of wildlife, obviously birds and insects and so on, and there are many other things that people are discovering even now where trees are interrelated with other forms of wildlife. They provide a, a lovely atmosphere. A lot of older people, like myself, associate Worcestershire with elm trees. Charm disease, it suddenly took off. It's been around for a long, long time, but it seemed to become rampant all of a sudden, maybe a different fungal strain. But it really took off then, and, and the, the area around uh, this area, it looked almost like a desert with dead elms in the summer, everywhere. It looked very, very bleak, uh, certainly uh, consequences for many forms of wildlife, including some species of butterflies, became rare or even extinct. Although Dutch elm disease all but wiped out the native species, a chance discovery by Bob and his team provided a glimmer of hope. Some years ago we were travelling around the area and uh, noticed uh, a beautiful elm tree near Breeden that was in full health, it was a bit strange uh, because the, the whole area was at one time filled with elm trees and this is the only survivor. We took cuttings and we've been rooting these here at the college. We've been busy propagating these now for some years. Although it's still early days, Bob's hopeful that the young elms will flourish and be reintroduced across the countryside. It never can be absolutely sure they're going to be completely immune or even resistant but so far so good the elms we've planted are really growing away now quite well but I've got high hopes that there are quite a few elms that now that are growing away very healthily. But I've always been very conscious of the beauty of creation and God's goodness it seems to me that every leaf and every blade of grass is an I love you from the Lord. For me Nature is one long ongoing miracle. 
we shall never fully understand it. It's like opening a box and then we find the wonders of creation and there's a smaller box inside which we have to open and again and again and again. So just for me it's a never ending wonder. quite normal once. We lived in Bewley just down the way. Um, we had fairly normal jobs. John worked for a solicitors in, in Birmingham and I worked for the Forestry Commission. But an opportunity came up to move up to this farm and at first we thought, no, no, a silly idea. And then we thought, well, why not? You know, opportunity of a lifetime. Let's go for it. John and Linda are sampling the good life on their farm, living in harmony with the natural environment. A lot of people say that we're well bonkers. We've taken on a lot here. It was very hard work for the first few years. We had to replace all the fences around the farm in order that we could get the cattle in and get them grazing. We wanted to farm it in a, an environmentally friendly way and um, it, we're not actually connected to the national grid here so we had ideas about using as much renewable energy as possible and heating the house with our own wood and all that sort of thing and generally have a go at looking after the land. And also it was very much about it being open for people to come and share that journey with us. So the folks here today learning about pig keeping, you know, it's just us sharing this is as far as we've got in our learning. And, hey, come on, people have been keeping pigs for thousands of years, so it can't have been that difficult. You know, Stone Age man didn't have an NVQ in pig keeping. You know, they just got on with it. We have other volunteers who are getting stuck into apple presses. They're learning those skills. We've had all sorts of people, uh, some not as weird as us. So you just pray that God sends people that are going to be useful, and they turn up. You should get another flush of juice. I like to think that people are enjoying coming here, enjoying being reconnected with the land. 
and just having some fun realising the sort of joy they can have in uh, being in the natural environment and working mm. in it. I can imagine out here seasons mean a lot more to you than they do to uh, the person who just picks up their food from the supermarket shelf. Mm. Yeah, the harvest is just uh, an amazing time and that sense, which I wasn't really fully aware of before we came here, and I suppose I've had a bit of a niggling thing going on about the harvest festival we do in our own church, which was ending up as sort of tins of baked beans and packets of spaghetti. And I'm thinking, this isn't what harvest is about. Harvest is about real food and that real sense of overwhelming, I don't know, joy that we've got food in the barn. If we've got the food in the barn, we'll be able to eat through the winter. And how, you know, 50, 100 years ago, that sense within a community that there was enough for us to get through the winter would just be so overwhelming. No wonder you wanted to sing your praises to the Lord. 